A very warm welcome to my lecture session and I am from the Department of Commerce. My name is Ankita Ghosh and today I am going to deliver my lecture on a topic which is on marketing management and this particular portion can help not only the students of BBA but also the students of become honors and become general. My topic today is product. Product is one of the most important component of marketing. It is the cornerstone of the marketing mix. Actually, if the product itself fails to satisfy a customer, then no other element in the marketing mix can help the product to perform better in the market. Products are the building blocks. Good products are always the key to market success. Product decisions are taken first and then it, is, it becomes the central decision to all other items in the marketing mix. Actually, product is the engine which pulls the rest of the marketing. In this regard, the father of marketing, Philip Kotler, has given this definition which when says, product is anything that can be offered to the market for the purpose of attention, acquisition, use or consumption which might satisfy a need or a want. In this note, let's check out the features of a product. The very first feature of a product is saleability. What is saleability? Saleability means the power of a product being sold in the market. The power of a product being sold in the market. It means that a product should be capable of being sold in the market. For example, none of us go to the market asking for rotten fruits or rotten vegetables or broken furnitures. Hence, this kind of things are not a product because these are not saleable. Next feature is utility. Utility means the product must have some kind of want satisfying power. I repeat, the product must have some kind of want satisfying power. Next is adequate demand. This means that the product shouldn't be sold once or twice in the market. It should have a regular demand. Next feature is legal. This means that the product should be recognized in the eyes of law. It should maintain all the features or all the legal restrictions that have been given by the government. Next point is risk of non-sale. This means a product has some kind of risk attached to it. It refers to the fact that this particular thing or a product may or may not get sold in the market. Next point is storability. Storability means a product should have the capacity or the capability of being stored. This means that if a product, if it is not sold today, it should be capable of being sold tomorrow. And the last point or the last feature is tangibility. This means a product can be tangible or intangible in nature. Tangible for products refer to that it can be touched, felt and seen. For example, this duster. We can touch this product, we can feel this product as well as we can see this product. So any product under the sun which we can touch, see and feel are tangible products. On the other hand, intangible products are those which can neither be touched nor seen. They can only be felt and such products are commonly known as services. 
In this regard, let us find out the differences between products and service. The very first feature that I am going to talk about in this regard is perishability which segregates these two things. Perishability is the very first point is perishability. Perishability means that products can be stored. This means a product which is not getting sold today can be sold tomorrow while services which are not getting sold today gets vested. For example, say the service of a doctor. A doctor sees patients or checks patients from morning 8 to 10 a.m. at his residence. On one particular day, due to bad weather condition, he fails to get any patient. This means that the service which he could have provided on that particular day in that time slot gets vested. Similar thing happens in case of movie halls. The shows which goes vacant gets vested. Similar for flight or train tickets. But this is completely different in case of products as products can be stored. They have a shelf life. They have a shelf life. They can be stored today and can be sold again tomorrow. Next point is the transfer of ownership. Next point is the transfer of ownership. While purchasing a product, we get the ownership. This means the ownership gets transferred from the seller to the buyer. But in case of services, there is no transfer of ownership. We get nothing in hand on the purchase of a service. We only get a feeling. In this regard, there is another point that is return. While we are buying a product, we are getting something in our hand. If we don't like it, if we wish, we can return it. But in case of services, we cannot return anything since we have nothing in our hand. Next feature or the next basis is separability. Separability. Products are separable from its producers. Products are separable from its producers. So, the consumption and production of products can be done at two different places. But in case of services, the producer can never be separated from his service. Production of service and the consumption of service goes hand in hand and that is a simultaneous process and that is a simultaneous process. The last feature I am going to talk about between product and service is assessing the quality. Assessing the quality. Assessing the quality of a product is very easy. Assessing the quality of a product is very easy. For example, while we are going to purchase a home, we can check every corner and every portion from the drawing, from the dining, from the kitchen, the balcony to everything and we can select a home. But in case of service, assessing the quality is not at all very easy. For example, for buying that same home, if we appoint someone to find out or to investigate the legal things, then we have to trust on his expertise rather than having anything in hand to see whether he is trustworthy or not. The next topic we move on to is the types of product. Based on the nature of the product, we can classify product into two broad heads. We can classify products into two broad heads. Heads. The first is consumer product and the second is industrial product. Consumer products refer to those products which are purchased by the final customers for the purpose of their consumption. 
These are products which are purchased from the market and are immediately consumed either by the purchaser or by his family members or they may even be gifted. But in case of industrial products, these are purchased either by the manufacturers or by resellers for the purpose of manufacturing or developing something or for the purpose of reselling. Such products are generally not consumed directly. This two classification can be further subclassified as Let's first check the consumer products. Consumer products can be further subclassified into convenience products, shopping products, specialty products and impulse products. Next we move to the different types of products. Products can be broadly classified into two categories based on nature and they are consumer product and industrial product. Consumer products are those products which are purchased by the final consumers. Con consumer products are those products which are purchased by the final consumers for their self-consumption. For their self-consumption. Such products are consumed directly by them or by their family or those products can even be gifted while industrial products are products which are not purchased for the purpose of consumption. They are either used for producing something else or for the purpose of reselling. Industrial products are thus purchased by organizations or by business people. Now, these two categories can be further subclassified. Consumer products can be further subclassified into four categories, namely convenience products, shopping products, specialty products, and impulse products. Coming to the convenience products, convenience products refers to those goods which are low involvement in nature which requires least decision making and is purchased on a regular basis. Convenience products are can be subclassified into three categories and they are Convenience goods are generally low in price and they can be further subclassified as staple goods, impulse goods and emergency goods. Staple goods are those goods which are purchased routinely. For example, rice or salt or matchbox. While impulse goods are those goods which are purchased based on impulse such as chocolates or ice creams. Again, emergency goods are those goods which are purchased on an emergency basis and they are also more or less purchased on a regular basis without much decision and those are medicines. The next classification is shopping products. Shopping products are products which somewhere involve more decision making as compared to convenience products. The price range is from medium to high and shopping product requires a lot of comparison between the quality, between the brands, the color, the design, etc. Example of shopping products can be furnitures, garments, shoes, etc. The third category is specialty products. As the name suggests, these products are very special to the purchasers because of its high price. So, 
a lot of involvement is required before making the purchase of such products. Example can be diamonds, jewelries, homes and so on. The last category under consumer product is impulse products. Impulse products are those products regarding which people have no knowledge or less knowledge or they does not pay much attention. Like who thinks that he or she may meet an accident tomorrow or may be diagnosed with a severe disease tomorrow and for that particular purpose takes protection today itself? None of us. Right. So impulse products are such products which the price range actually varies for such products and the such product and the companies or the salesperson forces us to think for such things. Example for impulse products are insurance policies or mediclaim policies and so on. Next, we move on to industrial products or industrial goods. They can be further subclassified into the following types. The first category is materials and parts. These are products which actually goes completely into the production process to produce something new. Materials and parts can be further subclassified into two heads. The first is raw material and the second is parts. The first is raw material and the second is parts. Raw materials refers to semi-finished, uh, sorry, raw materials refers to unfinished goods which goes into the production process completely while parts are semi-finished goods. Examples of raw materials while Building a house can be sand or cement while parts are bricks. The next classification of industrial product is capital items. Capital items refers to the second classification is capital items. Capital items are long-lasting items which are basically costly in nature this kind of items does not undergo any change themselves but they are very much present in the production process to help in the production of other products examples can be buildings machineries vehicles etc and the last subcategory is accessory equipment Accessory equipments are shortlisting products. These products does not undergo any change themselves, but they are very much present in the production process or in the area of the production process, helping or managing the production function. Examples can be hammers, calculators, pen, and so on. Next, we move on to an interesting topic called product mix. Product mix actually refers to the different types of products and services that the company offers the consumers or to the marketplace for sale. Product mix is also known as product portfolio or product assortment. Actually, in reality, if a person wants to know about the different products of a company, then the person must take a look at the product mix of the company. Product mix have four dimensions. Product mix have 
four dimensions and they are product width, product length, product depth and product consistency. Product width refers to the total number of product lines or the different types of products that a company offers to its customers for sale while product length refers to the total number of products. I repeat, product length refers to the total number of products that a company is producing and offering its customers for sale. Next is product depth. Product depth means under each type how many variants the company is offering to its customers. And the last is product consistency which says how closely are the different product lines related to each other. How closely the different product lines are related to each other. Let's understand the concept with two simple examples. Here, we are taking into consideration the product mix of Coca-Cola. The product mix of Coca-Cola. So, the company's product width as it is showed in the picture, the product width is 2. One act is soft drink and the other is Minute Maid. The product type or the product category for Coca-Cola is 2. One is soft drink and the other is Minute Maid. The product depth, as I just said, refers to the different variety under each type. So, for Coca-Cola under soft drink, the different varieties are Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, Diet Coke and Coke Zero. So, the depth of Coca-Cola is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means 5 for soft drink and 4. Those are guava, orange, mango and mixed fruit. Those are 4 for Minute Maid. So, we can write it this way. Product width for Coca-Cola is 2. Product depth is five for soft drinks and four for minute meat. Now coming to product length, product length refers to the total number of products that a company offers for sale. So here in Coca-Cola, the total product length is 5 plus 4 that is equal to 9 and now coming to the consistency part yes the product mix consistency for coca-cola it is very much consistent the consistency we can say that the product mix of coca-cola is very much consistent because all the products are very much closely related to each other as these are all soft drinks as these are all soft drinks which quenches the thirst of people.
The second example that we take is for the company Apple. The second example that we take is for the company Apple. Here we can see that the company offers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 type of products. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 type of products. Those are iPhones, iPads, Macintosh, Apple Watch, TV and music. So the product width of Apple here is 6. The product width is 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 for iPhones. iPhone 11 Pro, iPhone 11, iPhone SE, iPhone XR. So it is 4 for iPhones. For iPads, it is also 4. That is iPad Pro, iPad Air, iPad and iPad Mini. So, the depth for iPad is 4. Next, we move on to Macintosh. We see there we have 6 varieties. We see 6 varieties in case of Macintosh. So, the depth is 6 for Macintosh. And those are MacBook Pro 13, MacBook Pro 16, MacBook Pro Air, MacBook Mini, iMac and iMac Pro. So, 6 for Macintosh. Next, we move on to Apple Watch. In case of Apple Watch, we again see 6 varieties. In case, of, in case of Apple Watch, we again see 6 varieties and those are Apple Watch Series 5, Apple Watch Studio, Apple Watch Nike, Apple Watch Hermes, Apple Watch Edition and Apple Watch Series 3. So, it is again 6 for Apple Watch. In case of TV, we can see that there are 5 varieties. In case of TV, we can see that there are 5 varieties. Apple TV Plus, Apple TV PP, Apple TV 4K, Apple TV HD and AirPlay. So, it is 5 for TV. In case of music, we see that there are six different types and those are Apple Music, AirPods Pro, AirPods, HomePod, iPod Touch and Bits. So, there are six varieties and we can write it in this manner that it is depth is six for music. Coming to the length. The length of apple in this example that we have taken here is the sum total of all this. Is the sum total of all this. These are 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6. And that makes it to 31. And that makes it to 31. The consistency of apple here in this example we can say that app, the consistency of apple is very much consistent. The product mix is very much consistent in case of apple because all these are electronic products because all these are electronic products. So, the consistency for Apple is very much consistent. But, if you consider the product mix of Tata, then it is very much diverse. The product mix of Tata is very much diverse. It manufactures automobiles to salts to steels and what not. So, the product mix 
of Tata is very much inconsistent. Same goes for Avon. It produces cycles, it produces beauty products, it produces garments, while it produces again cosmetics too. But in case of Adidas and Nike, their product mix is very much consistent again. Why so? Because they mostly deal in product, sorry, they most, if we consider the product mix of Nike and Adidas, they deal in sports accessories only. They deal in sports accessories only. Next, we move on to another important topic that is the product life cycle. That is the product life cycle. Quite like the human beings, as we all pass through different stages of life from birth to death, a product also passes through different stages before it completely gets extinguished from the market. And those stages are namely introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. In the introduction phase, a product is just introduced in the market. It means that a product takes birth in the market. The sales volume in this stage is very, very low and very high expenditure is being done in order to make the product popular or known to people. So, for this particular purpose, high advertisement and promotional expenditures are done. The sales volume and the profit volume is very low. In fact, the profit can even go nil because the expenditures are such high. Huge distribution is done over here and the product has some kind of risk too because it has been observed that many products have failed in its introduction stage only. So the introduction stage is very very crucial for any product and hence the marketers must very carefully plan the promotional strategies the next stage is the growth stage the next stage is the growth stage in this stage the product is accepted in the marketplace the product is accepted by the customers or the consumers and hence we see that there is a very steep rise in the sales of the product in this particular cause we see or in this particular graph we see that there are two curves and these are the four stages of product life cycle. Along the vertical axis, we measure the sales and profits. Along the horizontal axis, we measure the time. The dotted line represents the profit while the darker line represents the sales volume. As I was saying, introduction gives very less amount of sell and very less amount of profit or even no profit. This is very much depicted here. The next stage is the growth stage. The next stage is the growth stage where I just said that the product is already accepted in the marketplace and as a result we see a steep rise in the sales volume of the product. We see a steep rise in the sales volume of the product. Here the market is concentrated on the distribution and advertisement of the product. The type of advertisement done here is product preference. The advertisement type shifts from product awareness to product preference. 
the marketers here pays least attention to the product development or maintaining the product quality profit is seen to be rising at an increasing rate profit also rises at an increasing rate the next stage that the product reaches is maturity the next stage that the product reaches is maturity maturity means that the product is at its peak the product product is at its peak here the next important topic is product life cycle the next important topic is product life cycle as we all human being pass different stages of life from birth to death in the same way a product also pass different stages from introduction to decline introduction is the birth of a product while decline or abandonment refers to the death of the product here in this graph we see we have two curves along the vertical line we measure the sales and the profits in the horizontal line we measure the time we see two curves here the darker curve represents the sales line while the dotted curve represents the profit line and here are four important stages of the product life cycle those are introduction growth maturity and decline i repeat the four stages of a product life cycle are introduction growth maturity and decline in the introduction stage it is quite like the birth of a new product the product is just introduced in the market since people are not very much aware regarding the product very intensive advertisement and promotional programs are done in order to make the customers or the market aware regarding the presence of the product in this stage there is very low sales and as a result very low profit is recorded this stage is very crucial again because many products have been found to fail in the first introduction stage itself so this is one of the most crucial stages there exist no competition in this stage there exist no competition in this stage next point is the or the next stage is the growth stage in this stage the product is accepted very well in the market in this stage the product is very well accepted in the market by the customers so we see there is a steep rise in the sales of the product we see a steep rise in the sales of the product the pro since the product is highly accepted the market is concentrate on the distribution of the product instead of the maintaining the quality instead of maintaining the quality the type of advertisement shifts from product awareness to product preference the type of awareness shifts from product awareness to product preference and it is in this very stage that the competitors start entering the market next is the maturity stage in this stage the product reaches its maximum sales the product reaches its maximum sales so is the profit the maximum profit and maximum sales is recorded in this particular section product actually 
gains a lot of competitor a very high competition is found here so it is very important for the marketer to spend a lot of money to maintain the product sales and profit or to maintain the market share this is very much important so that the product can hold its market share this is very much important so that the product can hold its market share instead of going into the last stage which is not at all acceptable and that is the decline stage that is the decline stage here the consumers find other better alternatives or convenient alternatives for the product and they actually leave this particular product and move to purchase another product and hence this particular product and the sale of this particular product goes down and down in order to recover and continue maintaining the market share what the advert what the marketers does is they do cost cutting they decrease their advertising they decrease the promotional cost in order to maintain the market share or to keep the cost of the product low so that they can concentrate on selling the product what more done in this stage is in order to avoid the declination new features are added to the product new features are added to the product so that the product can be again relaunched in the market and can continue maintaining the sell what important here is that a product life cycle is not same for all the product and it is again not same in all the market while it is a, while a product is in the decline stage the product the same product can be reintroduced in another market to see the growth and maturity stages there another important point to notice here is the time gap is also not same for all the product the time gap is also not same for all the product in all the market it varies depending on the product type for example if we see salt salt never have seen the decline stage yet as because salt have no other alternative so the life cycle of salt is at maturity the salt is in its maturity it has maintained or it is maintaining its sales and it is still holding its market share so at last we move on to the very last slide of the day and that is the stages of new product development before we come to the stages let us understand what is a new product what is a new product new product can be two things new product can be two types one is a complete new product which is completely new and new product can also be and the other type is a new product can also be an existing product with added features so new product can be of two types it can be a complete new product or it can be an existing product with new added features and which is again 
relaunched in the market which is again relaunched in the market so making a new product is not at all an easy thing or developing a new product is not at all an easy thing and as a result it passes through seven crucial stages as a result it passes through seven crucial stages the very first stage of new product development is the idea generation stage in idea generation new product ideas are actually collected from different sources like the consumers like the market researchers like the sellers or from the management of the company as well different ideas are gathered in this stage the second important stage is idea screening the second important stage is idea screening in this particular stage all the ideas that is gathered is screened here they are evaluated only the good ideas are kept and all the other ideas are dropped here next is concept testing in this particular stage the ideas that have been selected in the previous stage are placed in front of the prospective customers and they are asked to give in writing a detailed thought about those ideas the customers are asked to provide a detailed thought regarding all those ideas in writing that what they think about this product if this product would really be good be really be helpful in the market if this product will be successful in providing them or in satisfying their needs and wants so all this are done in the concept testing next is business analysis next important stage is business analysis in this stage what happens is the idea that just got finalized or the two or three ideas that somehow got finalized are now analyzed in market perspective that how would they be whether they would be even profitable or not how much investment they would require and all those things are being analyzed in this stage so far this was the concept development stage the next stage that is stage 5 which is the product development stage it is the stage where the product which was an idea the product which was just in pen and paper is now converted into a product on hand is now converted into a product on hand the product is now given shapes and features the product is now shown how it would look like so this is the product development stage the different ideas or the different packaging promoting or the shape the color the different physical features are the product in this stage and the next important stage is test marketing in this test marketing phase the products are actually produced in a small quantity and they are given to the prospective customers to selected prospective customers for usage and their feedback is collected this is very very important to know whether the product would even find success or would fail in the market in the long run the collection of feedback is very important here so test marketing is done in this regard before the product is sent for mass production before the product is sent for mass production in case the product gets a green signal in the test marketing phase it is sent for the commercialization that is the mass production and it takes the market entry 
and that is how a new product is developed so with on this note i complete my today's lecture and thank you